Good morning, everyone. How are, how are you all today? It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art, and we are going to paint together this morning. It's early on a Friday morning, not super early, because you know we start here at Craft Around the Clock really early, so this isn't the earliest segment. But welcome, welcome to my Tinker's Cart Art page, and welcome to the Craft Around the Clock, and that's this is my segment this morning. So for those of you who are my Tinker's Cart peeps, Craft Around the Clock, you need to check out. It's a fabulous page. It's already been going for hours this morning. Crafters all day. Um, from morning to night, um, all sorts of things. Really cool, not just painting. I do a little painting, but there's so many crafters here. So I wanna say good morning and welcome. And let me know that you're here. I can see people popping on, so thank you. And um, it's a snowy morning in New England. I'm in Massachusetts and it's been snowing uh, last night and this morning really wintry so i'm happy to look ahead to some spring and we're going to do a valentine's project today good morning sharon actually it doesn't have to be just valentine's so let me show you i'm going to pull you up comments questions say hello i'm going to watch them on my computer here hey judy good morning good morning chris thank you for watching i'm so glad you're here and let me show you what we're going to work on and it's simple i i love to paint i love to teach painting I love to do simple projects, and even if you're not a painter, jump in. It's it's um, really fun. So this is a little project I did last Valentine's Day in my art membership. I like to do things that are seasonal, but not so much so that you have to put it away right after Valentine's Day. This doesn't have to be a Valentine's Day. It's a heart. It's got be mine. You could write something else. You could leave that off. You could just paint a little heart wreath. You could use the design and the way we're going to paint these little flowers for a little round wreath. So every time I paint, I try to give you some ideas to repurpose and reuse what I'm showing you. Good morning, Charlotte. Hey, Cheryl. Thank you guys for watching. I love seeing you all here and um, it makes me happy to paint and to paint with my friends. So welcome. So we're going to do this. So what I've done, I'm going to just use my regular craft acrylic paints. We don't need a lot of colors. We can mix colors. Do Start with what you have. I have a few um, synthetic brushes I'll show you as I go along. I just have a square canvas. I love painting in a square format. This is probably a 10 by 10. I have an 8 by 8 maybe here um, that I base coated with just pink. So to save time and jump right into painting. Good morning, Jean, Janine. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys. So all I did was a quick coat of a pink paint with a wide synthetic brush kind of beat up. That's okay. If you don't have pink, it's so easy. Just mix your red and white. You don't need all the colors. So here we are. Streaky is fine. It's just the base coat. I like to use textured backgrounds. So can you see it's just a little blue, a little bit of ivory. I'm going to just slap that on there. And then when that's dry, I'm gonna jump in and show you how to paint it. Zena, good morning, and Jill, thank you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna put my sample here. I keep showing it to you as we go so you can see the progress we're making. And I simply have out some acrylic colors, pretty, oops, pretty basic. I've got black and white, brown. I love the ivory, so I do buy that in the bigger bottles. Again, you could mix that up with a little yellow and brown and some white. I've got a few yellows here. I'll show you where I use them as I go, some red and some blue. For this textured background, and I'm going to maybe add a little bit of teal, actually. I did a tiny bit of teal in the background, and I'm gonna just add a touch of that to my palette. Simple supplies, inexpensive supplies, and, and if, like I said, if you haven't painted yet, pick up a few colors, and, uh, and this is recorded, so you can watch it later. You can come back on the page and, and watch it, slow it down, stop it as you need, but it's simple. Hi, Pam, good morning. I know, I love this one too. I've been painting this a lot lately. I did a little reel, if you look on my page, painting uh, time-lapse on a little board that I crackled. I used that crackle medium. It looked cute on that too. So this is the pink underpainting. It's completely dry now. I'm just taking, again, a little worn out half inch, uh, whatever flat brush you have, this is a quarter, but whatever you have. You can even use those big chip brushes that you buy at the hardware store. And I'm going to just take it and slap the paint on here and there. I'm gonna do white, I'm gonna do ivory. I'm not gonna worry about what I'm putting where. Take some ivory. See how I'm just doing little Xy strokes, just crisscrossing? I'm gonna do that here and there. I'm gonna do that with the white here and there. 
It's gonna mix a little on the canvas and sometimes it's just white in places and sometimes it's just ivory. It's not, um, it's not hard stuff, guys. Just go on there. A little pink peeking through here and there is nice. This is how you can make it your own too. You could do a heavy coat if you like the look of that. You could do a very light coat and have just a lot of pink coming through. Make it your own. Don't try to make it look just like mine. Mine won't look like just like mine when I paint it again. So we're not trying to copy it exactly. We're not trying to worry about examining my painting and saying, oh, well, I have a dab of white here, not ivory. It's not a big deal. Just go ahead and have fun. Like I said, I'm going to add a little of that teal in at the end. But for now, we'll just slap that paint on. You can make really cool textured backgrounds with this technique, whether you underpaint or not. Get a few colors that you like. Put them on. Just, it's just little, I just use little X strokes. It gives you some texture. Sometimes I'll do this with a palette knife, and that really gives you texture. Uh, hi, Andrea. Um, I think this is an 8x8. Eight eight. Oh, 10 by 10 excuse me. So the big one is 12x12. 12 12. This little one is 10x10. Is 10 10. I buy these in the bulk packs at Michael's. I love the square format, and I love that they've come out now with a lot of sizes. They even have 6x6. Six eight by eight, 10 by 10. They come in packs of like six or seven. I use the square for a lot. I just love the way it looks. It's a gallery wrapped canvas. So you can see it's wrapped on the edges. Afterwards, I would just either continue this painting around the edge if you wish, or you could paint a solid color around. And it's nice because you don't have to put it in a frame. You could put a push pin in the wall and hang it right up. And of course, if you wanted to frame it, you could, but I love the gallery wrapped canvases because that because of the fact that I like to hang them up. And sometimes I'll hang three or four together or six or make a little um, display. I also like the gallery wrapped canvases that are about two inches thick. They're like a heavier, um, they're, they're wider. And, and those are fun to use, especially the little ones because you can just stack them on top of one another as well. So it's pretty cool. It's, you're not seeing a huge difference in the off-white, the ivory, and the white, but I like it because it just mixes it up a little. Again, you can go as heavy as you like, as light as you like. So I've just got a whole series of these little strokes on there in white and ivory. I don't know why, but I wanted to add a tiny touch of teal. And remember to mix your colors. If you don't have the teal, you have a green and a blue, you can mix it, add a little white, and you're going to get a nice um, a teal. Hey, Pam, you can get them on Amazon. Yes, I did get them at Michael's, but you can get them at Hobby Lobby probably and on Amazon as well. You could also get them as wood panels. They could be little square wood panels, which are kind of nice. Taking just a tiny bit of that teal on the corner of my brush. I don't want big, heavy teal strokes on here. I want them light. And so if I do them now while my paint is a little wet, I can get just little hints of teal in there. And it doesn't matter where. I just place them around here and there. I'm taking some more teal, but I'm taking just a tiny little bit just with the corner of my brush. I might even pat it off a little bit so that I'm not going on with a big, heavy brush load of it because I want it to be subtle. So if it goes on and it's a little heavy like that, just brush it out a little. I don't know why I want, I love teal and pink, so I think I added it in because I had the pink showing through and I just love teal and pink. That's probably why. Hey Denise, good morning. I'll try to catch you guys as you're coming on, but um, if I don't, welcome and good morning and I will come back to the comments later and address them if I don't catch them here. So I'm going to have you, I do have you right here. And now I want this to dry before I start. And since we're here and we have 45 minutes, I am going to speed up the drying. Just give it, hit it quickly with my heat gun. Nice to have the heat gun nearby just to do that because I'm a little impatient. And just to go over it again, in case you're just popping in, we are going to paint this little design on a piece of, uh, on a piece of a square canvas, gallery wrapped canvas. I'm just using my ordinary acrylics. You can use whatever you have. They could be heavy body, they could be tube, they could be other brands, whatever you like. And I do have a piece of chalk and a pencil handy. This is not a design we have to trace on. I'm just going to sketch a heart on. I'm going to start painting the little, uh, the little vines, add the flowers. 
I'll sketch the writing on. But you don't really need a tracer on this. The B is pretty easy. He's just a little oval. And we add some, a little head and some wings. So anyway, excuse me. I'm going to quickly dry this up and then we'll hop into the painting. Hi, Kathy. Hey, Jody. Good morning. I know it's, I keep thinking it's Saturday, but it's Friday morning. put the paint on fairly thin so it's pretty dry already. A little up close shot so you can see what that looks like. Remember this is recorded. It's going to be on my on my page and on Craft Around the Clock as well. Good morning Gail. We're seeing you not we're painting. Um, let me know you guys if you can see it. I can see my painting on my um, feed here on my computer so let me know. Um, oh, thank you, Carol. I appreciate it. I would love to have you all let your painting friends and creative friends know what I'm doing here. So, hi, Carrie. Good morning. Thank you. So, again, we're going to sketch the heart on. Janice, welcome. Oh, first time. W welcome, welcome. Thank you. Okay, good. I, I can see it on my end. Gail, maybe you need to rotate the phone. I'm not sure. Um, but the recording's here, and don't worry, I'll share it into our group as well. Gail's one of my members in my art membership, so welcome. Hi, Kathy and Jody. Okay, I'm just going to sketch the heart on. Again, if it's a darker background, I usually use my chalk, which is good because you can erase it and fix things. But I, know, I won't see it with my chalk. So I, just with a pencil, I'm going to kind of just eyeball the center of the canvas, and I'm just going to do it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, people, it's handmade right we don't want it to look perfect because then it wouldn't look handmade I just sketched a quick little heart outline I'm not even sketching the bee or the writing on yet I want to see where my flowers fall and then I'll put those in there and I simply start I'm going to start with my liner brush now if you just have a round or a detail brush that's fine I do like my liner brushes because I can load this long tip up with a lot of paint and get some nice long strokes without having to reload my brush too too often so i'm going to jump right in and i'm going to take some of my brown paint now i'm going to just do some branches it's like a grapevine wreath right i'm going to add a touch of black i never can get um, my brown dark enough out of the bottle so i always add a little black darken that up and i'm adding water i'm adding a little bit of water to my paint here. I want the consistency to be very loose so I can do nice long strokes. If the paint is dry or too, or it's out for a while and it gets dried up and you're trying to make a nice stroke, it's going to drag. So if your paint is ever dragging, just add a few drops of water as you go. You'll know it's too watery if it's running down your canvas, but I try to add as much as I can so I can get nice fluid strokes. Oh, good morning, Regina. Okay, so for the heart, for my base, because I'm going to cover most of this with my little flowers, is I'm simply going to take this liner brush and just make these little wiggly strokes, add more paint when I run out. I'm just going to do that. Painting upside down this morning, you guys. Pretty cool. Not sure what it'll look like, but it's upside down. I'm doing these wiggly strokes because I want it to be like a grapevine wreath. So what I do is I kind of go and interlock them this way. I just make a few other strokes. This gives me my base just to know where my flowers are going to go. And that's going to give me a guide as to where my flowers are. You could put a, a little more of that on there if you want. And I also sometimes, you know the grapevine wreaths have these little curly cues coming off them sometimes? You know, kind of like this sort of thing. Oops, yep. I throw those in there. Those strokes are a little more, you need a little more, uh, it's nice to practice them. I know they're difficult sometimes. The key is thin down the paint, super light touch. If you don't like them, just take them right off when after you make them paintbrush with some clean, clean water will remove that right away for you. I just make some nice little curly cues here and there. Again, most of this is hidden, so don't, don't worry. Don't be looking at it so close worrying about every little stroke you make because most people aren't going to see every little stroke. 
they're going to see the entire painting completed. When you're painting, do not examine your painting and get down on yourself and don't like it and it doesn't look like mine and finish it. They all go through ugly stages. Finish it. It's acrylic. You can paint over it if you don't like it. Enjoy the process. That's what it's all about. And when someone is standing this far away from your painting looking at it, they're going to no not notice that you made a little error right there maybe. And really there's no errors, right? There's no right or wrong in this stuff. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put my flowers and leaves on top. I'm just dabbing off. That paint was pretty wet. And I'm going to go ahead now and just make little one stroke flowers. One stroke and I'll show you how I do it. And I just do some pink ones, yellow, white. Use the colors you like. You could use teal flowers here. You could use orange flowers. You make it yours by adding colors and in, in things that you like. I do the flowers first. And then in between those, I stick little green leaves and things. Good morning, Sandy from Tennessee. Thanks for saying hello. Thank you guys for jumping in. Please, I'd love to see um, your comments and your emojis. Remember, when you're watching all of us creators online, you know what you can do to help us the most is comment. Send us, even if it's an emoji, it just helps us be seen by more people who want to create. So we'd love that. If you let your friends know about us and... And throw in a comment. I'd love to say hello. Thank you. For the, well, thank you for the hearts. Look at them all. So cool. Okay. One stroke flowers. Let me grab a piece of paper here. And I can kind of show you how I'm going to do this. I take whatever color I want to make my little flowers. I'm going to do it in the pink to show you on this white paper. And I'm always thinning my paint as I go a little bit. Um, because it flows easier. And so you'll see me dipping into my water quite a bit. Paint is drying as we speak. I'm making the pink for the flowers. I'm just adding some white to my red. So you can really, you have your primary colors. That's all you need. You can really um, make most of your colors. So I've just loaded my brush with pink. I'm using a filbert here, which is a rounded edge brush. Again, you don't need to have that. You could certainly use a flat brush. You get the same technique. It's your own preference and what you're comfortable with. And what I do is I use this as a little background thing. I'm starting from the outside petal. I'm going to make this big so you can see it. Press, pull into the center. And just go around. Press, pull, press, pull, press, pull. Secret is outside in towards the center. You get a nice shape. And then that's a flower. That's all you need on that tiny little wreath. And just remember, I wouldn't start at the inside out because you're going to get a weird shaped petal. Practice. Sitting down with a blank paper like this and practicing brush strokes is relaxing and it's going to increase um, your your um, confidence and you're going to be able to just, and you can make these tiny. I make them tiny sometimes. So that's simply what we're going to do for our flowers in the different colors. Purple would be cool, whatever color you like. I'm going to actually make, I'm going to make some very dark maroon. So I make my own maroon too. I just take a little black into my red. I'm going to make a little bit of a maroon first, and then I might take a brighter pink on top of that. And you'll see how that looks. So I just, I'm going to try to do this so that you can see it, because upside down doesn't matter with these flowers. I just go and make these little petals, little flowers all around wherever I want them. And the size of your brush is going to kind of dictate how big they are. This looks a little big for me. I wanted more of a little scattering of flowers, so I'm just going to go to my smaller flat brush. I do like to have a little bit of a variety of flat brushes so that I can use them for things like this, or for instance, if I was painting a building and I wanted to do some windows and they were that size, I don't have to fuss with them. I just do one little stroke and I've got a window or a door. And again, you can see I'm going from outside in, Press the, I press the brush a little bit, pull it up, and that gives you that little tail. It's like a little comma stroke. And I'm going around, and I'm just not even really one, worrying about how I'm spacing them. I'm going to go and just make some of these uh, uh, flowers. I think I'm going to go a little bigger on this project so you can see them a little better. I know my arm is probably in front of some of those strokes, but you get the gist of it. And... I'm just mixing the color as I go. That's very dark and black, but that's all right. I'm not going to worry because I'm going to put pink on top of it. Now, I do these little flowers. 
but I also sometimes go around and just put little three petals that like it's peeking out from behind something. So I'll put a few of those here and there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I did some yellow and some white. You could use all pink. You could use as many colors as you like. So um, just go for it and have fun and um, make it your own, like I said. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and make some yellow flowers. I've got my yellow paint here. Yellow is always very transparent. So what I do is I mix some white with it to make it a little more opaque. So with, when you're using yellow or orange in any of your paintings, and you want to cover an area, if it's dark especially, I would underpaint it with white, then put on your yellow. But if it's just a lighter background, you want it to really pop, you can use um, some white in your paint. And I'm even going to go ahead and do what I did with the, the uh, pink flowers. I did it a little darker to start. I'm going to take this yellow ochre color. It's kind of that golden color. And I think I'll just base coat my yellow flowers with that. And then I will use the bright yellow with some white. Oh, I have a big, oh no, I don't have a smudge there. I thought I had a smudge, but it's the pink showing through. Overlap too. I'm being a little careful in case the petal's wet, but you want to go right over. These are all uh, stacked on there. You know when you're making a wreath or you're doing something or you're looking at a bouquet, the flowers aren't all stand alone. They're stacked up on each other. Oh, hey, Janine, <laughs> thank you. So funny, people always talk about it. And you know, I just started watching Bob Ross. I know about him, of course, but I don't think I ever sat and really watched him. So I have been. And sometimes at my paint nights, people will put, like if there's a TV in the room, they'll put Bob Ross up on the on the, uh, on the the big screen while I'm painting. It's pretty cool. I, 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 um, I do love all his things and um, his calm, soothing voice. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> so I've got in some little whole flowers, some little just three things peeking out. I'm going to finish up with some white ones. And then we're going to go and add the second coat on there. White is just going to be the white. Same thing. I'm just going into my paint. I've got that little square brush. I put some just peeking out. Don't worry about empty spaces. We have leaves we're going to put in here still. The white ones don't show up as much. They're kind of subtle, but they're there. Just a little filler here and there. You can see it more when there's a little bit of pink showing or on those blue bits. And it's just a little bit of filler. I'm getting to be quite the upside down painter here, I think. Now, because there's white on the brush, I don't need to wash it because I'm gonna pop myself into some yellow. And I'm going to add a little white to make it more opaque. And I'm just going to pop little yellow centers into the middle of those white flowers I made. Now, whether it's a whole flower with all the petals or it's just a little piece peeking through, I pop a little yellow in the center and uh, that does the trick. And you can see, I'm not stressing or worrying about where's this place, what's that. I'm doing a very busy sort of design here, so it's going to look fine no matter what I do. There. I want to put a brighter layer of yellow on those ochre flowers, so I'm doing the same thing. I've got my kind of a cad yellow, a bright yellow, and I add a little white. And now I'm not examining each of these ochre petals and to see where do I want to place the yellow, I'm popping it right on top. Sometimes it shows up in the back, sometimes I cover it. It doesn't matter. I just like when you have the little shadow of some of that ochre showing through. It's kind of a nice look. Gives a little more dimension, I guess, to the little flower. Anybody here paint with one stroke painting and that sort of thing? I do a lot with the roses, the one stroke roses and the leaves and things, and it's a great fun technique. And um, anybody else work that way? I'd love to uh, hear what, what you like to paint. And like I said, these, sometimes you just sit down with um, your brush and some paints and paper and just practice the strokes. Practice the comma stroke, practice the pedal stroke. Like I said, it's, it's relaxing, but it's also good um, for practice. You'll notice it when you go to paint some of your little strokes, how much better you are when you have done um, hundreds of them, right? All right, Kathy. Oh yeah, do you, you, you should jump back in. I've done some rose um, on my page. You'll find some little tutorials on the one stroke roses and things. So it is kind of fun to get back into it. Alrighty, pink on top of my maroon. I go back to my pink I mixed up, white and red, or just use your bottled pink. And I'm going to go right on top of these petals again. And you can vary, like as I go, I'm mixing the paint on my palette. Sometimes it'll be brighter pink, sometimes lighter. I think that's more natural looking. 
if you are mixing it up a little, I don't worry about mixing a little perfect uh, puddle of pink paint. I'd rather have some white streaked into it, almost not even mixed up really well on my palette, just right over those little petals. I'd love it if you told me where you're watching from. It's always thrilling for me, even if I look at it later, to see how far and wide we reach here on the Craft Around the Clock group. It's all over the world, and because uh, that's what's great about the online. I begin um, doing online classes as well as my in-person, and I just love the fact that I have people from all over. I've met new friends and new um, painters everywhere. And the centers of these are going to be, I think on my painting, it looks like it's kind of an orangey salmon color. I can grab some of that. I can mix some of that with my paints I have out even. And Florida, I'm heading to Florida tomorrow. Um, I'm in Florida a lot and actually we did just buy a place in Lakeland. So I'll be down there in the winter if anybody's in that area. Very exciting. I spend the summers on the coast of Maine, so I'll have the best of both worlds. In New York, you're my neighbor over there, Michelle. You're not far at all. Alrighty. I did maroon centers for the yellow, so I'll take that maroon I've left here from that little pile I mixed. And see the centers? I don't know if I mentioned it. I'm just, um, oops, a little mistake, but I'm leaving it. I just pop a little stroke right in the centers, one little plop, not worrying about them. I hope this is showing you guys you don't have to be meticulous and super careful. I mean, there's paintings you might want to do that call for that, but I rather have fun. I like to use color, loose strokes, um, whimsical subjects. That's my jam. Okay. I think it's quicker for me just to grab a little of that salmon color for my centers. You could make it with a little bit of your, your red, a tad of the yellow, and some white. Easy enough, but I'm just going to pop those little, it's kind of salmon, so it's kind of a pastel orangey color, I guess. Pop those in. You guys can see that, right? Yeah. And I'll keep it on my computer so I can make sure you are, in fact, seeing what I'm doing. All right. Now, I didn't even, but on sometimes when I paint little one-stroke flowers like this, I will take a dotting tool, the back end of a brush, a toothpick, and I might just put a little dot in the centers on top of what I just painted. I didn't even do that on this one, but if you like the look, sometimes you could add a little extra something something with just some little dots on your centers. It's showing up nicely on that dark one, so I'm gonna just do that maroon center. And again, a toothpick works if you don't have one of these little stylus things. Okay, so now we do some fun leaves. And again, it's all one stroke. Flat brushes work great for leaves. Again, you can use a brush about the size that you want to make your object. And I have this little one I had. I think I'll use this one. It's, it's still kind of small, but if I apply pressure when I'm making my leaf, I can get it wider. And I neglected to put green out at all. So we could mix our blue and yellow, but I'm going to just put out a couple of shades of green here for us. I usually go with a dark and then more of an apple, like a lime green. And... Um, I like to have just a couple shades of green. So I do the dark first, and then I overlap sometimes with the light green on top. Let's see if there's anything left in that. Probably not. Let's just use this. I can mix it darker with a little bit of, um, oh, we have got plenty of dark green here. I certainly don't have any shortage of paint. Hey, Pamela. Oh, from Florida too. Where is that in Florida? Whereabouts is that? I'm not familiar. I don't know where all of the places are. My family's all in Orlando. My brother's in Lakeland. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm going up to Destin for the first time next uh, month, which is a different trip, um, but that's going to be fun. I've never been way up in the panhandle. I know that's way up there. Okay, so I'm going to show you on the paper quickly, just for fun. These I did just in solid colors. So I just took my little flat brush, pressed down, kind of pressed down and pull it, and I sort of twist the brush even a little, and look at that nice stroke you can get. So I can sometimes take it and then wiggle it and get a stroke. You can have a little bit of a different shape. You can have simply just a little push and pull, just a push and pull. Again, little strokes that you can practice. Push the brush and see how I'm twisting it a little bit and pull it. Now, these are just simple little tiny leaves. Just for the heck of it, since I'm right here with you, sometimes I would take 
the paint and I would load on a couple of colors. So on one side, I've got the green, I, then I put a little bit of the lime green on one side and white on the other and press and you get some shading and highlighting at the same time. That's for another day. I will do, maybe we'll do a segment just of the brush strokes and the one stroke flowers. If that seems interesting to you, let me know and I could do that next time. And no, and, and you know what? Um, I got Sweetie to course that uh, hasn't practiced in a long time. I, um, in my art membership one night, I was going to teach everyone one stroke flowers. And we ended up just sitting and practicing our, our strokes. And we didn't even get to making the flowers because everyone was having such a, a great time just practicing the strokes. They were said, this is so relaxing. So um, you don't have to be even paying attention that close. You could be listening to a podcast or doing something else and just kind of practicing. So let me throw my little simple leaves on here. I'm going to start with the dark, like I said. I'm not even thinking about it. I'm not examining this and saying, where would I put a leaf? I'm just jumping in and making leaves. So see the leaves I've done here? Just single little leaves. Sometimes I'll do a little two of them together. Sometimes I'll do three. Sometimes you can do a little vine and just do this sort of a little thing. So it's a good kind of place to practice different uh, strokes and different groupings. I go right into the little groupings of flowers and I can go right over them. I'm not worrying about everything being standalone again. I'm tucking them in over behind and not really paying much attention to it. Sometimes I could be out further like that. You could put a little stem and connect it if you felt you wanted to. That's not necessary on this little guy. So you can see that I have covered a lot of the little brown twigs and my little curly cues, but there are still some showing. It looks really natural. And wherever you want them. I just dry my brush off now and I'm gonna go into the light green. Hey, thank you guys. Um, Kathy, okay. I just saw another name go by. I wanted to say hello. Gosh, I love it that you guys are popping in and I and I feel bad I'm not watching every little comment, but I like I said, I'm gonna go back and do that too. So I'm gonna hop into the light green. Because I'm going into another green, I just dried the brush off on the paper towel. I mean on my rag there. Taking some of that apple green. This is a color I love, this apple green, because I use it a lot. Easy to mix with your primary green, maybe, or you can mix some blue and yellow, get your green, add more yellow, a little white, you get this apple green. I use it so much, I do buy it um, in the bottle. I mean, we love to buy paint, right? I have, I have way too much. Um, but I love some, the colors, I love the teals and whatnot, but I want you to know that you don't have to have all those colors. You can very easily mix most all colors from your primaries. And it's good to um, sit, like sitting and practicing your brush strokes. It's, it's good also to just mix colors, make little color swatches. I have a, um, a downloadable, uh, I think it's on my YouTube channel too, uh, color wheel. You can print it out and then I show you how to mix the colors and fill them in. Really handy to have a color wheel around when you're painting because sometimes you want to use a certain color palette or color scheme and you, I love putting the complementary colors up against each other. Sometimes that, that pops. It's kind of nice. So it's um, kind of a good little lesson. Again, there's all your leaves and that's all we need for that little wreath. You could go back if you wanted to and put little veins in, a uh, little doodad. You could look at my uh, photo, my image there a little closer, but I want to hop in and paint the B and do the writing for you. The B is super simple. I'm just going to, you can use your flat brush, a round brush, a filbert. I just put, I just paint it. I'm going to paint them upside down kind of. I just paint a little oval of yellow, just a little oval of yellow. I think I might have to turn that to do it, but that's how I start. That's my B, my B body. I didn't even sketch it. Now I'm going to go and do the rest with a little liner brush. Hi, Kathy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead now and just with black paint, and I am thinning it down with a little water. I want it to be looser like we did with the line work. When I'm doing any detail work, writing, anything like that, I really need paint to be thin like ink. So we'll put a little head on our B, and I don't do it just round. Um, I'm going to just paint it here, and I'll hold it up. I just kind of make a round head 
and I make it, and it's not super important. I just make it more to a little point in the front. I don't actually put the little stinger on, but it's kind of that little Hershey Kiss shape, I guess you'd say. And then I put, actually, before I put on my stripes, I want to shade and highlight. I know it's a tiny little element. It doesn't have to have this, but I just take a little of that gold color that we had. Because if you put your highlights and sh shadows on your forms, they take form. They look 3D. And even on a little element like this, across his belly, I'm just making a line of the golden ochre color. I'm going to take white and do it across the top. Even if I don't blend it, you can blend it just by softening the edge. But even if I don't blend it, doesn't that look more rounded now that has a little form for the little bee body? And while I'm at it, because I want it to dry, I'm going to make his wings in kind of a light blue, just so that we can see it. Would it really be light blue? Probably not, but I like that idea. It would be in nature if you saw the sky through the bee's wings, but I just want you to see them, and if I just did them in white, you wouldn't. So I take a little light blue, and I just paint two wings. That's a little dark, so I'm going to add a little white to it. And just fill them in for now. Oops, I grabbed some I grabbed some red, so guess what? We get purple. There's a little color mixing lesson. But I'm simply gonna fill it in with light blue. And look at how far we've come and we're not even reaching the 45 minute. We still have like nine minutes. It's like speed painting, guys. Imagine if you were sitting down without having to worry about 45 minutes, what you could do. Um, Cindy, oh, I will post this on YouTube. Yes, I will. I have been trying to remember to, as I do my segments, to I download them, of course, but I will post them. And if I don't, message me and remind me. I've got to get into the whole swing of putting everything in all the places. Going back to my black, because now I've done the little body, and I just give them a couple stripes. And I don't do just a one-stroke stripe. I like to zigzag it, so I'm going on the body, and I'm just doing this. Can you see it? It's kind of like little, just little a series of little strokes to make it a little more fuzzy looking. Whoops. And I'm going to give him a few little legs. He's just got, they're just a couple little strokes of little legs. Don't get all, you know, worried about these. It's just that little shape. And then to finish the bee, I'm going to actually put some little white lines on the wing. So let me do that now. And it's not anything fancy. I just outline it with white, the two wings. And I throw a little, few little veins in there. So they're just little lines that go in every which way. They're no special. Now, I want to grab a little of that blue that we used, that light blue, because that's when I'm going to highlight my black bits of the bee. When I'm painting anything black, pets, whatever it is, I highlight not with white, but with light blue, because I just don't like gray. I'm a, I'm a colorful painter, and it just dulls things down. And so if you look carefully, you would almost see a blue highlight, because again, you might be reflecting the sky or whatnot. But just look closely when you're observing paintings or things in nature, and um, take a look at all my pet paintings. I did, I had a little pet painting marathon before Christmas. I did 23 portraits for people in two weeks before Christmas, and they're on my page there. That was, and I'm doing two now. It's taking me longer to do the two than I did the 23, but anyway, you'll see the black dogs have all been highlighted with a light blue. And so I'm just going to highlight the head a little bit, just a little stroke of blue. That's a little bit bold, a little bright. I'm going to soften it a little bit. And then I just go down on the legs of the little blue. I'm going to tone that down. I don't want it to be so bright that you don't see the little eye. Believe it or not, I'm going to paint a little eye on this guy. Can you see the tiny bit of blue on his head and on his legs? Just little strokes. A little. I'm just going to dot a little white dot in there for his eye. Our, our bee needs an eye. Won't be able to see the the uh, hive and the flowers if he doesn't have a little eye. Pop a little eye in there. Teeny little dot. You could do it with the toothpick. I did it with the tip of the brush, but you could do it with a toothpick easily. Yeah, Donna, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, and then you get notified when I put things up. And keep after me if you see something that I didn't add. I would uh, love it. 
and Cindy too. If you want to, if you guys want to subscribe, it's just Tinker's Cart Art on all the socials. You'll find me everywhere. I also have a private platform for our painting group. It's like Facebook. It has a nice discussion feed. And it's a great community. I'll share the links with you guys for that if you're interested in, in popping over there. And all we have now is the writing. Let's not get worked up about writing. It's not hard. And if you don't like it when you do it, you can simply, I'm looking for one of my markers to show you how easy it is to do with a marker too, if you want. So paint thin, a nice detail brush that has a nice tip. If the brush is splaying all over the place, it's going to you won't be able to do it and it's not because you can't it's because it's the brush so if you have the right brush thin down the paint i'm going to sketch on the writing for this guy just to give me an idea where it's going just a little sketch i'm not the best if you could you can even read my handwriting i can copy things to paint or print really well but my handwriting is a lot to be desired so i'm using the maroon i'm taking a thin brush and then I'll show you another way afterwards, but I'm gonna just thin down that maroon paint. So black and red, thin it down, nice and thin. I'll look at the time. We have four minutes, guys. I wanna thank you while I'm doing this for watching. Um, and stay tuned because we have another crafter coming up after me and then all day long. And created in, created in awe is next. So thin brush, liquid paint. I'm just gonna pretty much follow my lines here or look at my design there. And I'm going to try to go in one long stroke, but I don't have enough pigment on there. And you know what I just said to you about the brush with all the little hairs? This is one. So it is not perfect, but uh, you're going to get the idea. And I'm not even going to switch brushes right now because I want to get this done for you. So I can't do this upside down. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great um, Friday. Have a great weekend. I, in my head, it still continues to be Saturday. I do not know why, but, and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Painting again. I make a little heart for the eye and the mine. I don't know if you can see it, but the, the, the E and some of them, you can see the brush hairs that were kind of splayed around. So do look at your brushes and make sure that looks a little better. And then you can sign it. But if you are a little hesitant about doing some of the um, the writing or the details and things, I can suggest paint markers to you. I like the Posca ones. They seem to work the best. I've tried a lot. And they come in all different colors and widths. You can get the fine. You can get, um, you know, all colors. Heavy, heavy ones. I am not a spokesperson for them, but I do love them. What's different about something like the paint marker as opposed to like a Sharpie is actually has paint inside. Can you hear it? You shake it up. It's got a little metal ball in there to shake up the uh, paint and when you apply it it looks just like paint um, this is just a heavier uh, you know you could do your writing with that I'm doing it upside down well you can get the idea and it's it's kind of like it's paint I usually have a black and a white one I do these for my illustrations and things but usually a black and white one in my kit I just discovered they have them with brush tips though and it's so cool of course, this is, um, I don't know if you can see it on here, but if, if you're going to paint with this, it's just, again, paint on the inside. And I have been loving using the brush tip, so that's really fun. Posca is the name. You can get them on Amazon. Um, sometimes you find them. I have a nice art store nearby that carries them, and they're not expensive, and they work really well. Very, very careful about going into the paint with it before it's dried, because if it's even damp and you touch it with your marker, it seizes up. So let it dry really well. I've got um, a minute. I'm gonna show you my Valentine's painting I did for my art membership. And if you see the picture online, you see it has writing here. I it superimposed that so I could put like, you're just my type or whatever. And you could do that. You could print up um, in a Word document or something, or the Canva, the font you like, print it out and you can just trace it on or you know with your marker it would be super simple so that's my little valentine's painting like i say i try to stick with something a little um more off the wall or different that's not strictly just all hearts and whatnot so anyways we wrapped it up in time what do you guys think oh diane thank you it is a gift i understand that but also it, you can learn step by step painting and that's why i'm here to show you and uh, just for the fun of it, just to enjoy it. It's so much fun.
10 o'clock. Stay tuned for um, Created in Awe, and I will see you all next time. Thank you so much. Have a great day.